Hello people, in this video let us understand what molding is. See molding is, um, we are talking about which topic? Obstetrics. Okay, so we are talking about the fetal head. So what will happen? The fetal head has to come out of the maternal pelvis, isn't it? So let's say this is the maternal pelvis. It has to come out, right? It will not have so much space, guys. It will have to um, squeeze through this space. So that what happens is it undergoes something like molding. Who undergoes molding? The head of the fetus. Who undergoes molding? The fetal head undergoes molding. <clears throat> and what is the change of in the fetal head? It's the change of shape. Don't say change in size. It is not the change in size. It's the change in shape. So, look at this image here. So, if it is something like this, it is getting more oval. Okay. So, that is it. It's just the shape, the size, the volume does not change. So, it is the no change in size or volume. What is changing? The shape. The shape of the fetal head is changing while passing through the resistant birth passage during labor. Now, who is helping on all these, these sutures, you know? this anterior fontanelle, posterior fontanelle and the four sutures that you have learned. Let me show you those. So, um, this is the skull of the fetus which you have already seen in the previous videos. So, what do you have here? Look at these bones. How much gaps are there between these bones, right? So, this all helps in um, uh, molding. So, this is the frontal bone. You are looking only at one. The other one is on the other side. Here, you have seen the parietal bone. And here you're seeing the occipital bone, here you're seeing the temporal bone and look at the gaps here. Here you have the anterior fontanelle that is the coronal suture. Here you have the uh, posterior fontanelle in the lambdoid suture and uh, then here you have the sagittal suture here. Uh, okay, so so many sutures. We'll show you all the sutures. Wait. See the sutures again. We'll show you the sutures. Look at the sutures. Sagittal suture, frontal suture, coronary suture lambdoid suture and what about the fontanelles here you have the anterior fontanelle anterior fontanelle posterior fontanelle and there's some sagittal fontanelle also basically all these will help in the passage of this fetus from in uh, you know uh, within the maternal pelvis so this is molding you should write everything else also sutures font fontanelles right all these you should explain how they help in the baby to change its shape remember not its size okay then basically here they are showing you an image look at uh, this here how the baby's head is going through here they are trying to show in b in b guys in b this one they are showing something called a super molding super super molding it's trying to adjust way too much of adjust adjusting it's trying to do right so, what will this lead to? This can lead to hemorrhage. Okay. Then, let's look at this last one here. What are they saying here? Again, molding, excessive molding. So, what is happening? There is, it's so becoming so oval, I feel. So, it has become a caput. Caput is forming here. Caput. What do you, what's the full word? Caput sucedinum. Sucedinum. Yes, caput sucedinum. Okay. So, you can see this blue thing they're showing, right? Caput sucedinum. So, did you understand molding, now super molding, excessive molding, so many terminologies they are telling you. So, basically what happens in um, second stage of labor when the baby is trying to come out, because of super molding, there can be increased intracranial stress or hemorrhage, okay. Uh, so, what and all are the problems? So, that can happen by super molding, intracranial stress can increase, hemorrhage can happen, then um, there can be tentorial tear, tentorial tear can be there, okay. Uh, this is all because of super, super molding, let's say, super molding. These are the problems with super molding. And look at this one, in a preterm, what can happen in molding? Because the bones are very soft, what is happening? It will allow dangerous degree of molding. Again here, there is an excessive dangerous degree of molding because these bones are so soft. It will lead to subdural and subarachnoid hemorrhage. In whom? In preterm, preterm infant. Okay, so in this video you have understood what molding is, you have understood it's a change in shape, not the size or volume of the fetal head while passing through the resistant birth passage during labor. See, resistant birth passage. The words they are using in the definition, they are not saying when it is passing through the birth passage during labor. No, it is passing through the resistant birth passage, only that time it needs to mold. Okay, we're done with molding. Bye bye, bye bye. Wait people, looks like there is a little more, there is something called as degree of molding, look at this, 0, 1, 2, 3, something is there, 
So this is also they are asking in the exam. So look at this. Some more technical details here. Zero. See, there is. I don't see any much molding here. The second one, uh, one plus. Okay, one plus. One plus is where they are kind of touching each other. The bones, right? Two plus. One is going over the other kind of a thing. And three plus is going way beyond. And then lastly, they have shown some tear in the dura mater. It went so much and it got torn. The tear in the dura mater and the vessel. And there's some bleeding here. Looks like. What do you say? So you have understood zero, one, two, three. So let's understand what zero, one, two, three is. Bones are separated and sutures can be felt easily. Bones are separated, guys. Okay, remember zero, zero. They are not even touching each other. Bones are separate. One sutures opposed. They are touching each other. See the sutures are touching each other, guys. Two sutures overlapped but reducible. You can reduce them. Oh, that is the factor here. And three is the sutures are overlapped and not reducible, not, not, not reducible, not reducible is three, not reducible is three. Okay, so that is the degree of molding. If they ask you in the exam, now coming to some other points about molding. Molding is a state of reduction or loss of space between skull bones. It is the state of reduction or loss of space between the skull bones. Okay, increased molding can happen when there is increased molding. What does it indicate? Increased molding indicates that there is cephalopelvic disproportion. Cephalopelvic disproportion, that is the fetus head, that is cephalopelvic is the maternal, maternal pelvis. And there is disproportion, the pelvis is small and the baby's head is large. So, it is not able to come out of this pelvis which is really small. Okay. So, cephalopelvic disproportion. So, if there is increased molding, it indicates cephalopelvic disproportion. So, we told you the four degrees of molding. 0, 1, 2, 3.